Hey, Professor Dave here. I want to tell you about mass spectrometry. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Okay, so when we do mass spectrometry, what we're doing is we're taking a sample and we are vaporizing it and then ionizing it and then smashing it up into bits. And then we take those bits and we send them through this tube and then they go through a curved section where because they have a, a, a formal charge of some kind, they, they, uh, they have a curved path with, with which we can get data that will tell us something about the mass to charge ratio of each of these bits. So M over Z is the mass to charge ratio. And if these uh, have a, a single charge uh, or you know, plus one charge, then we can essentially think of this as the molecular mass of each little bit, uh, each little chunk of the molecule. So what ends up happening, what I've drawn here is a sample spectrum. This is a pentane. So let's say we have pentane. Now, if we're going to uh, ionize that and smash it up into, a bit, into bits, what kind of bits are we going to get? Well, let's say we, we you know, smash off uh, one of those carbons. We're going to get this four carbon chunk. Or we could smash it up right here. We could get a three carbon chunk and a two carbon chunk. Or right here, three and two. So there's all kinds of different uh, chunks that we can get of the molecule. And those will have their molecular masses represented right here. And so, for example, right here we've got uh, this is 72, and so uh, <clears throat> what this means is that some of the parent molecules will be ionized and turn into a, a, uh, something called a radical cation. So this is a radical cation. This is essentially the mass of the parent molecule, of the whole thing. And so we don't see any data beyond that because there can't be anything heavier in, that, in there than the whole molecule, right? So this represents the entire molecule. That's the molecular mass of pentane. And then what we can get is uh, w w this data is telling us something about the chunks or the fragments that we can find in a molecule. So over here at, at around 57, this would probably correspond to if the butyl, uh, it would correspond to the butyl cation. So that's if one carbon got smashed off the molecule. We've got this butyl cation, it's flying through, we collect the data, we get a mass to charge ratio of 57. There's going to be a good amount of that. Over here we've got 43. So 43 probably co corresponds to the propyl cation. So if we add up all the atomic masses, we're going to get 43 for that. So that works there. We've got 29 right there, and that could be the ethyl cation. And then we might get a good bit of the methyl cation, which is going to be around 15. Now, <clears throat> the, uh, the, first of all, the one thing we want to talk about, what's all this little extraneous other data? Well, the thing is, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, some amount of, of compounds that have uh, atoms of different isotopes. So we might have some carbon-13, we might have some carbon-14, we might have some hydrogen-2 or 3, and so there might be some data that corresponds to fragments that have atoms in them of different isotopes. And so that might give us a mass to charge ratio that's slightly different. Those will usually be smaller peaks because the, by far the most abundant carbon is carbon-12, by far the most abundant hydrogen is hydrogen-1, and so we're not going to see too much of that other data, but it is there, and that's why we see it. And then, so just to give you an idea of why this is useful, once again, maybe we are using this in conjunction with IR spectroscopy or some other, uh, some other spectroscopic method to try to identify what this molecule is. And all we're going to use this for is to say, we're going to, if we have a proposed uh, structure for a compound, we might compare it to a mass spectrum because we'll say, let's say, okay, this is, this is my molecule and I've got all these, uh, all these parts here, right? And, and what we might say is, well, if that's the structure, we better expect to see that fragment right there. And so all we do is we compare a proposed structure to a mass spectrum and see if that mass, mass spectrum corroborates it. Another thing we could do is if, we're, if we know we have pentane but we don't know which kind of pentane or, or, or we're looking at different uh, structural isomers of the same empirical formula, just looking at the way that it might feasibly break down into fragments, will, will, the, the mass spectrum will help us corroborate a particular structure. So that's the very basics about mass spectrometry. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and as always feel free to email me professordaveexplains at gmail.com.